Welcome back for another deep dive. This time we're taking a look at Grok AI and, well, specifically how it could change healthcare. Oh yeah, Grok AI. This is a big one. It is. It's a it's this subscription AI chatbot, you know? Uh -huh. From Elon Musk's XAI. <laughs> right. And uh, it's designed to answer questions. But here's the thing. <laughs> it uses real-time data from X, which as most people know is what Twitter's called now. Yeah. But it gets even wilder. Grok can also look at medical images like x-rays, MRIs, stuff like that. So we're talking about an AI that's not just pulling information from the past. It's learning and adapting in real time. Exactly. And that's what makes this deep dive so interesting, right? we yeah. got to figure out, can it actually live up to all this hype? Well, it's a fascinating concept. I mean, imagine just uploading an image to X and boom, you've got a diagnosis. Right. Just like that. Now, Musk says Grok is, quote unquote, quite accurate when it comes to medical diagnoses. But I'm sure you can imagine a lot of doctors are pretty skeptical. Mm, of course. There's a world of difference between, let's say, analyzing a meme and actually diagnosing a medical condition. Yeah, for sure. So for this deep dive, we found some stories from doctors who actually put Grok to the test. And what happened? Well, the results have been kind of mixed. Oh, really? Yeah, there was this one researcher, Dr. Daria Unatnas. He tried Grok out with an x-ray. And get this, Grok actually got the diagnosis right. Wow, okay. That's impressive. It is. <gasps> but there's a catch actor Unatnas had to like adjust his prompt a few times, give Grok more context. Almost like it needed a little help to see the whole picture. So it's not quite as simple as, you know, snap a picture, get a diagnosis. There's still a need for that human touch, right? Seems like it, yeah. But then you have Dr. Lori Heacock. She's a breast radiologist. Okay. She decided to try Grok with breast imaging. It, oh, well, it was completely inaccurate. I mean, completely. It even yeah. misidentified basic anatomy. Whoa, okay. That's mm. a pretty big difference. Right. On one hand, you have Grok making accurate diagnoses. And on the other, it can't even get basic anatomy right. So what's going on here? Well, one key difference between Grok and other AI models is how it's trained. How so? Grok is trained on this massive data set that includes real-time information from X. Okay. And that's different from how other AIs are trained. Exactly. Most AI models are trained on static data sets, you know, stuff from the past. But Grok's getting a constant stream of new information. Huh. So in a way, it's always learning, always updating. Precisely. Now think about the potential here. Imagine an AI that's got access to up to the minute data on like emerging medical trends, new research findings, even people sharing their experiences on X. It's like having an AI that's always on top of the latest medical news. Yeah, and that could be absolutely revolutionary for healthcare. It's, there's gotta be downside, right? Well, there are definitely some concerns. We've gotta remember that X, like any social media platform can have, well, misinformation biases. You know, not everything you read online is true. Yeah, that's for sure. So how can we be sure that Grok is filtering out the noise and basing its diagnoses on solid information? That's the million dollar question. And yeah. it's one that we're going to dig into deeper as we continue this deep dive. Yeah, it's a tricky situation. It really is. I mean, we're basically talking about trusting an AI with people's health. It's a huge responsibility. Absolutely. And that's why this whole thing about Grok's training data is so important. Yeah, we talked about how it uses real-time information from X, but, you know, what does that actually look like in practice? Well, imagine this. Grok could be tapping into a huge network of information, like breaking news about new treatments, research findings, even just people talking about their experiences on X. So it's like having an AI that's constantly reading medical journals, attending conferences, and talking to patients all at the same time. Pretty much. It could even, like, analyze patterns in all that data. Mm. Maybe even spot outbreaks or new health concerns before humans even notice. That's kind of amazing when you think about it. Like, it could revolutionize disease surveillance and help us catch things early. Exactly. But here's the other side of that coin. What if some of that information is wrong? Oh, right. Fake news, misinformation, all that stuff. Yeah, and let's be honest, X has its fair share of it. That's for sure. I mean, it's not just about, like, getting a bad restaurant recommendation. We're talking about medical diagnoses here. Right. The stakes are way higher. If Grok is making decisions based on bad data, people could get misdiagnosed or get the wrong treatment. That's a scary thought. It is. So the question is, how do we make sure Grok is using good information? Yeah, how can we be sure it's filtering out all that noise? Well, for starters, the systems behind Grok need to be really good at checking the information. Like, they need to vet the data, make sure it's accurate, and filter out all the junk. 
So it's not just about how much data Grok has access to, it's about the quality of that data. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where transparency is so important. XAI, you know, the folks who created Grok, they need to be upfront about how they're handling all this. People need to know that they're taking steps to deal with bias, filter out misinformation, and make sure the data Grok uses is reliable. Otherwise, who's going to trust it? Exactly. And it's not just about hypothetical concerns here. Remember those European regulators we mentioned? They already raised some serious issues about privacy and Grok. Oh, yeah. They even tried to stop X from using user data to train Grok. They did. And that just goes to show that this isn't just a technical problem. It's a societal one. So we're not just talking about building a cool new AI. We're talking about figuring out how to use it responsibly. Precisely. It's about finding that sweet spot between innovation and responsibility. Making sure we're not pushing ahead without thinking about the consequences. Because let's be real, there is always a chance things could go wrong. We've seen it with other technologies. Oh, yeah. Unintended consequences are definitely a thing. And when it comes to healthcare, we can't afford to be careless. Absolutely. So I guess the big question is, what happens to human doctors in all of this? Yeah, I mean, if people start relying on AI for diagnoses and treatment plans, what does that mean for the role of doctors? Do they become more like consultants or advisors? Maybe. Or maybe they focus more on, you know, the human side of things, the emotional support, the empathy, all those things AI can't really do. It's hard to imagine an AI replacing that human connection entirely. I agree. Yeah. But it's a question worth thinking about. And it's one that we'll need to keep asking as AI becomes more integrated into our lives. Yeah, it's tough, right? Like on one hand, you can see how AI could make healthcare better. I mean, think about it. Faster diagnoses, more personalized treatments. But then you have all these ethical questions, the privacy issues. It's a lot to sort out. It really is. And that's why we need to be having these conversations now. Yeah. Before this stuff becomes even more widespread. Exactly. Because, I mean, we're kind of at a crossroads, right? We have to decide what role do we want AI to play in healthcare. Yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? Do we want AI to just be like a tool? Something that helps doctors do their jobs better. Right. Or is it going to become like the main thing? Like maybe someday AI is making all the diagnoses and treatment decisions. It's a tough one to answer. And honestly, it's a conversation that's probably going to go on for years. Probably. Yeah. But I think it's important to remember this technology, it reflects our values, you yeah. know, like what we as a society think is important. Exactly. So how we use AI in healthcare, it's not just a technical decision. It's a reflection of who we are, what we believe in. And those choices that we make now, they're going to have a big impact on what healthcare looks like in the future. Absolutely. So we need to be having these open and honest conversations. Like, what kind of healthcare system do we want? What role do we want AI to play? How do we make sure it's used ethically? Big questions. And I think as we wrap up this deep dive, it's only fitting that we leave our listeners with one last thing to think about. Okay, so imagine AI, like Grok, is everywhere. It can look at medical images, make diagnoses, even suggest treatments. So what happens to doctors then? Right. What do they do? Do they change, maybe focus more on talking to patients, providing that human connection? Or does their expertise just, I don't know, become obsolete? It's a question that doesn't have a clear answer yet, no. but it's definitely something we all need to be thinking about. Absolutely. Because the future of healthcare, it's being chased right now. And that's it for our deep dive on Grok AI and the future of healthcare. Whew, we covered a lot today. Yeah, we did. We talked about the potential benefits, you know, the faster diagnoses, personalized treatments. But we also dug into the concerns, the bias, the privacy issues. And of course, the big question, what's the role of human doctors going to be in all of this? It's a complex topic. Yeah. But hopefully this deep dive gave you some food for thought. Definitely. And, you know, it's okay to have more questions than answers. That's what makes this stuff so fascinating. Yeah. So thanks for joining us on the deep dive. And until next time, stay curious.